Yes, we can. We're good to go. Okay, I'm going to do go into slideshow mode here. <laughs> good afternoon, everybody. This is Chuck Hughes. It's uh, great to be here today. Um, I want to thank Tom and his staff for um, taking the time to organize these webinars. Um, I enjoy doing them, and it allows me to stay in contact with my members, and um, I like to um, discuss uh, the strategies that are working best under the current market conditions. So thank you, Tom, for putting this on. And um, today we're going to talk about Prime Trade Select. That's my uh, trend following system I've been using for many years um, to trade stocks and options. <clears throat> so we're going to look at uh, using Prime Trade Select to select stock and option trades today. And uh, I'm going to show you over $3.3 million in actual profits uh, for Prime Trade Select. And I'll also show you my uh, current profit results, and then we can have a question and answer session at the end. I took a snapshot today of the uh, VIX volatility index, and this measures. Uh, Invest, investors fear, and usually when the uh, VIX uh, increases in price, the, that means the uh, S&P 500 index is declining in price. It's kind of an inverse uh, indicator. And you can see recently we've had three spikes of the VIX index, and uh, they indicated that the uh, S&P 500 index was declining. So the strategies we'll discuss today have been performing well despite these volatility spikes you see here that we've had recently uh, that occurred during market sell-offs. So Prime Trade Select has been performing well during this type of a market condition, and it leads us to the best profit opportunities, and these opportunities have been vastly outperforming the broad market. Prime Trade Select is a three-step um, process. Uh, the first step is we determine the price trend and the buying pressure, and we use um, a simple trend-following system I've been using for many years to determine the price trend. Step two is we want to confirm that price trend and determine the extent of the buying and selling pressure and isolate the very best profit opportunities. On any given day, we'll have hundreds of stocks uh, that could be on a buy signal according to the trend system. So step two allows us to narrow down that list to the opportunities uh, with the best profit potential. And then step three is we select an optimum entry point, and I'll show you the tool I use on a daily basis um, to help enter trades, uh, not only stock trades, but option trades too. It's helpful for selecting uh, strike prices. So step one of prime trade select is we use uh, the trend following system to determine the price trend. And when the price trend is up, we buy stocks, call options, call option spreads, and covered calls. When the price trend is down, we buy bearish ETFs, put options, put option spreads, and covered calls on bearish ETFs. And this uh, selection process has been very successful during the last two severe bear markets. And I just wanted to mention that right now we have mostly uh, uh, bullish positions, but there are periods when uh, the, the major trend is down and we'll have mostly bearish positions. We, we that occurred during the last uh, bear market, and uh, the prime trade select can also be used to select bearish trades, and we did, um, we did heavily short the market in the last bear market and uh, were very successful. So the uh, prime trade select uh, works in both bullish and bearish markets. Now, the general goal of trend following is to quantitatively measure the buying and selling pressure of a stock. And if we can quantitatively measure that, it allows us to follow the trend instead of trying to predict the trend. 
and we use a system to measure the trend instead of using emotional decision making, which can uh, lead to trying to predict where uh, the next move is, and uh, it, it, it's, it allows you to um, uh, trade on hunches and guesses rather than on a quantitative system. So if you use, I found that if you use a quantitative system that uh, you can develop a discipline to uh, trend follow and you can be very successful uh, in any type of market condition. I like to use exponential moving averages to uh, measure the trend. And I'm displaying a price chart here for Apple stock. And you can see the daily price movement of Apple uh, with these vertical lines. And uh, this blue line is an exponential moving average. It's the 50-day exponential moving average. So you can see just at a glance when you're using a moving average, you can see at a glance that the trend for Apple stock at this time period was up. And um, this, this trend has since reversed, and um, our trend following system exited Apple last year, uh, long before this, uh, this big decline set up. So exponential moving averages uh, are the average price of a stock over a specified period of time with more weight given to the most recent daily bars. So our trend system uh, rules are if the 50-day exponential moving average is above the 100-day exponential moving average, that stock or ETF is on a buy signal. And if the 50-day exponential moving average is below the 100-day exponential moving average, that stock or ETF is on a sell signal. Here's an example of a buy signal, and we can see this blue line is the 50-day exponential moving average. We can see right here in April it crossed above the 100-day exponential moving average, and uh, Apple stock was on a buy point uh, right here. And as long as that 50-day exponential moving average, which is the um, blue line here, as long as that's above the 100-day, Apple stock is on a buy signal. And here, again, is the uh, daily price movement, which is indicated by these uh, vertical lines. So we, we can uh, get an instant picture of whether we, should buying, whether we should be buying or selling a stock just by looking at the 50-day EMA in relation to the 100-day EMA. So if that 50-day is above the 100-day EMA, we want to be buying that stock. And if the 50-day crosses below the 100-day EMA, we want to be selling this stock. And here's an example of a sell signal we can see right here. This is for Merck stock. We can see right here at this time frame, the 50-day uh, exponential moving average crossed below the 100-day. So Merck was on a sell signal. And at this point, you really don't know um, how long or how sustained this downtrend is going to be. So um, you want to consider um, exiting your long positions in this situation because um, you don't know how extensive the decline is going to be or how long it's going to last. Now, when a stock or ETF is on a buy signal with the 50-day EMA above the 100-day EMA, we take bullish trades. We can purchase uh, stocks and ETFs. We can purchase call options and bullish option spreads. And when a sell signal is indicated, we want to be purchasing put options, uh, bearish option spreads, and bearish ETFs. Today, we're going to be looking at purchasing stocks and uh, call options uh, using uh, Prime Trade Select. And I did a historical test of the 50-day 100-day EMA system, and what I did is I looked back over a 24-year period, and I calculated what it would cost to buy 100 shares of a stock on the initial buy signal. And for these uh, stocks listed in the left-hand column here, the total uh, dollar amount to purchase 100 shares of each of these stocks when, it, when they uh, turn bullish 
was uh, $8,204. And over the course of that 24 years, that $8,200 investment produced a $210,000 return. So we had an overall uh, gain of 2,567%, or about 100% a year, uh, using the 50-day and 100-day EMA system. And uh, the, I also calculated the average loss, and we can see the average loss uh, over that period was about $150. So the average loss in relation to the total gains is, pr is pretty small. So what that indicates is that the system tends to get you out of losing trades before they develop into big losing trades which can uh, really hurt you, the performance of your portfolio. So the goal is to get out before a losing trade, a small losing trade develops into a large losing trade. And trend following systems are designed to do that, and they've been working very well. Now, it's easy to download the 50 and 100-day EMA lines. There's many websites uh, available that uh, will do this. Um, one of them I, I like to use is stockcharts.com, and if you just type in the uh, stock symbol and under chart attributes, uh, just choose uh, daily and then a one-year range, and then under overlays, just select the 50-day exponential moving average and the 100-day exponential moving average. A quick update, and it will display the 50 and 100-day uh, EMA lines. And... Uh, this gives us an instant view of whether we should be buying or selling that stock. So a very useful way to trade. And I think overall, this is one of the best methods for uh, the average investor or trader is to use a moving average system that follows the trend. Step two of prime trade select is to confirm the price trend. And we use several trend confirmation indicators, and this allows us to narrow down that list of stocks that are on a buy signal to the stocks with the best profit opportunities. One of the price confirmation trend uh, or price uh, confirmation indicators we use is on balance volume. And on balance volume measures the volume flow for a stock with a sing single easy to use um, uh, line. I'll show you an example of that here in a minute. Now, volume flow precedes price movement and helps sustain the price trend. So we want to measure that volume flow. And I like to use uh, the OBV line, uh, on balance volume line. And that the way they calculate that is when a stock closes up, volume is added to the line. And when a stock closes down, volume is subtracted from the line. And a cumulative total of these additions and subtractions form the OBV line. So here's a uh, price chart for Apple. Here's the daily price movement of Apple. And this chart below is the on balance volume line. And we can see the uh, on balance volume line is sloping up. And this confirms this uh, upward price trend. So this is a trend confirmation indicator that confirms the price trend. And we, again, we can see it's another simple indicator. All we want to see is this line sloping up. And uh, the numeric value isn't uh, very important. We just want to see this line sloping up to confirm the price trend and confirm the sustainability of the price trend because this volume flow uh, precedes price movement and we like to confirm our uh, price trend with volume flow. When we have an upsloping OBV line, volume is heavier on days that a stock closes up, and volume is lighter on, a days, on the days that a stock closes down. So that's an indication that the buying pressure is exceeding the selling pressure. And the volume flow helps sustain the price uptrend. And another uh, confirmation indicator we like to use is the new 52-week high list. And stocks that are making a new 52-week high are in a very powerful uptrend, 
and they tend to continue that price uptrend. So it's another way to confirm the price trend. And in my trading experience, I discovered that stocks that are making a new 52-week high, they tend to continue um, their price uptrend. And that confirms um, our buy signal with our trend indicator and allows us to further narrow down that list of stocks to buy with the best profit potential. So stocks that are included in the new 52-week high list represent the very best profit opportunities available out of the universe of more than 600,000 stocks or 6,000 stocks or so. And plain and simple, a stock doesn't make this list unless it's in a very powerful uptrend. So this is also a, a great place to start your uh, trade selection is to just simply go to the new 52-week high list and um, look at the stocks on this list and just focus on these stocks because if they're making new 52-week high, it means they're in a very strong, uh, powerful uh, price trend and we want to focus on these stocks. And Chuck, how, how, how often do you update your list or do you go through the metrics of this list? Uh, I usually uh, keep, keep a uh, list, uh, portfolio list, watch list on Yahoo Finance and what I'll do is I'll take the stocks that qualify under Prime Trade Select and I'll include it in this watch list on Yahoo Finance. Then each day I can just uh, click on that portfolio and it will show me the percentage gain for that day and the percentage gain year to date. So it's a good way to measure uh, the performance of a stock uh, that qualifies under Prime Trade Select. So. I think Yahoo Finance is a, is a very uh, useful tool and it's a great place to store your watch list and just kind of monitor stocks uh, on a daily basis and uh, I take my picks from that list uh, when uh, it qualifies for a prime trade select buy and then we, when we, it retraces a little bit and we find a good entry point with the Keltner channel. So, uh, it, it's good to maintain a daily watch list and uh, take a look at stocks that are in a strong price uptrend, wait till they retrace a little bit, and then jump in. So here's a, an example of um, a prime trade select. Again, this, this is for Apple stock. Uh, Apple has since reversed its trend, but during this time frame, we can see uh, the daily price movement here. Apple's making a series of new 52-week highs. So that confirms this price uptrend with the 50-day uh, EMA above the 100-day EMA. And then we also get a trend confirmation indicator uh, for Apple during this period with this upsloping on balance volume line. And that means that the volume flow is allowing this price uptrend uh, to be sustained and it is another good uh, trend confirmation indicator. Let's look at a couple of examples of uh, that I just took yesterday for uh, Prime Trade Select uh, steps one and two. And here's a, a daily price chart for Johnson & Johnson. Uh, we can see it's making a series of new 52-week highs the 50-day uh, EMA line, which is this blue line, is above the 100-day EMA, and we have an upsloping on balance volume line. So that's, that's a good example of the uh, first two steps of prime trade select uh, for J&J. Uh, &J. Here's another example. This is for Home Depot. And again, you can see Home Depot is making a series of new 52-week highs. 50-day uh, EMA is above the 100-day EMA, and we have an upsloping on-balance volume line. And one more example, this is for Allstate, the insurance company. And again, we have uh, the uh, stock making a series of new 52-week highs. We can see it's on a buy signal with the 50-day above the 100-day EMA and an upsloping on-balance volume line. So that's a few examples uh, that I took yesterday for uh, steps one and two of prime trade select. Now, step three is 
selecting an entry point for our trade using the Keltner channels. And the Keltner channels are basically an overbought, oversold indicator that can be useful and help us enter our trade. And it can also be used to select option strike prices. So here's an example of the Keltner channels for um, Apple stock. Uh, we can see on this chart the daily price movement, the vertical lines here for Apple stock. Now there's three channels with the Keltner channels. There's the upper channel, which is this uh, upper line here, the middle channel, which is the dotted line, and then the lower channel. Now the dotted line uh, middle channel is the 20-day exponential moving average for the stock. And the upper and lower channels are two times the average true range of the past 10 days. And it's drawn at equal distance from the central, central line. So upper and lower channels are two times the average true range of the past, th two, uh, past 10 days drawn at equal distance. So the, the Keltner channels act basically as an overbought, oversold indicator. When the price of the stock is trading near the upper channel, the stock is getting overbought. When the stock is trading near the middle or lower channel, the stock is getting oversold. So the idea here is we don't want to buy when the stock is trading near the upper channel because we know that it's, a, it's, it's probably going to retrace back towards the middle channel or the lower channel. And we, we uh, want to buy when the stock does retrace towards the middle or lower channel. And here's a price chart for U.S. Steel. And we can see when the stock gets overbought, it usually retraces. And when the stock gets oversold and is near the lower channel, there's usually a rally that follows. So. Uh, very useful tool for helping us uh, enter and exit trades. <clears throat> so again, the idea is you don't want to buy a stock when it's trading near this upper, upper channel and it's getting overbought. And I circled um, the uh, time frames when the stock's getting overbought uh, with the stock trading above the upper channel. And you can see in almost every case, uh, once it gets overbought, it retraces back towards that middle or lower channel. And here's an example of how I use the Keltner channels to help time my entry for purchasing Apple stock. And what I did is I, I uh, have a copy of my uh, brokerage transactions on this top table here. And this shows the date and the number of shares that I bought and the price that I bought Apple stock. And um, I like to um, uh, dollar cost average into positions if the stock is moving up in price. And um, so what I did was I circled um, the, the dates that I made these purchases of Apple stock. I circled that on this uh, price chart of Apple with the Keltner channel. So you can see on this first purchase here, I waited till the stock uh, retraced towards the middle or lower channel is becoming oversold. Then I bought the stock. And then here's another entry. Uh, again, I waited to, to the stock retraced towards the middle or lower channel, bought again, and then um, wait, waited again until uh, the stock retraced back towards that middle or lower channel. So you can see in all three cases, this uh, gave me a low risk entry point for Apple stock because there was very little retracement um, after my purchase. So in other words, I waited till it was oversold and then bought. And the, um, of course, we're only using these Keltner channels when the stock is on a buy signal. So at the time, the 50 day EMA was above the 100 day EMA and um, I use the Keltner channels to help time my entry. Right now, of course, the stock is on a sell signal, so we wouldn't be using the Keltner channels uh, to try to find an entry point because the stock is on a sell signal. 
Now another really useful way to use the Keltner channels is it allows me to just focus in on stocks that are uh, in a repetitive and predictive price pattern. And um, this is this is a, a price chart for J&J, &J, uh, which shows the daily price movement here, and then of course the three uh, Keltner channels, the upper, middle, and lower channel. And you can see the the stock is following a very repetitive and predictive price pattern. And uh, I'd, I'd much rather focus on this stock than this stock. <laughs> this this the the lower uh, chart here, price chart is for Alcoa. So you can see there's really no uh, predictive or repetitive price movement with this stock. This is over the same time period uh, that I took a snapshot for J and J. So over the same time period, the, the Keltner channels allowed me to focus in on this type of a stock rather than this type of a stock. So it makes your um, investing decisions much easier if you focus on this kind of a stock rather than this kind of a stock. Here's another example. This is for Kellogg. And again, we can see very uh, repetitive price pattern here. When the stock gets up near the uh, upper channel, it usually retraces towards the middle channel and very predictive uh, price pattern. And um, this, if you focus on this stock instead of the stock in the chart below, uh, you can avoid trying to trade stocks that have no clear trend. In other words, FCX in this lower uh, price chart, you can see there's really no clear trend with the stock. So you want to just try to avoid this stock. It's just too hard to try to make money with this type of a stock and instead focus on a stock like this. So this is another useful way to use the Keltner channels. Here's one more example. This is for Whirlpool. And again, we can see very uh, predictive price pattern. When it gets uh, overbought, it usually retraces back towards that middle channel and very uh, repetitive price pattern as opposed to this is potash here in the lower uh, price chart. And again, we can see uh, no clear trend with this stock. So uh, it's just too hard to trade. You just want to avoid this kind of stock and just focus on uh, a stock like Whirlpool. Let's look at uh, some current profit results for Prime Trade Select. And these results I'm going to show you are in my two retirement accounts. And I currently have um, over $436,000 in open trade profits, average return of 60%. And this is a combination of stocks and ETFs that I bought uh, using Prime Trade Select. And I also have covered calls in these accounts. So this first uh, retirement account has $331,000 in open trade profits. And this is the stock and ETF portion here. Here's the uh, short option uh, portion of the uh, retirement portfolio. Uh, and here's the second retirement account. This has $104,000 in open trade profits. And let's look at some um, actual trade results for Prime Trade Select for both stock purchases and option purchases. We'll look at stocks first. Um, but over the last four years using Prime Trade Select, um, it generated uh, over $1.5 million in profits for stocks and over $1.8 million in profits for options. And if we break the stocks down, the average return was 28.9%. Uh, and we had all winning trades with stocks. And with options, we had an average return of 85%. And uh, we had 91.5% accuracy. There was 183 winning trades, 17 losing trades. So let's look at the stock portfolios first. I'll just go through these pretty quickly. But these were stocks that were um, selected using Prime Trade Select. And in this first portfolio, we can see um, it produced $143,000 in profits, average return of, of 30%. So I'll just kind of run through these uh, over the last four years. 
the prime trade select's been been working very well despite the uh, volatile market conditions we've had over the last four years in the financial turmoil. So uh, the system's been uh, performing well. And in my advisory service, we also maintain a stock portfolio, and I just took a snapshot of our stock portfolio. Uh, we have $175,000 in open trade profits and an average return of uh, 106%. So the performance, uh, both the real-time and the advisory service performance, uh, demonstrate that the um, prime trade select is, is a good way to select stocks and has produced consistent returns uh, regardless of the market conditions. So that uh, concludes the prime trade select process for uh, stocks. Now let's take a look at using Prime Trade Select to select option trades. And I've been using the Prime Trade Select for many years to also select option trades. And I've been using it for more than 28 years. And I started small when, uh, in the beginning. I only had $4,600 in my trading account. I was trading at options when I first started out. But within my first two years, even though I only started with $4,600, I had more than $460,000 in profits trading options. And these are snapshots of my copies of my tax returns those first two years showing my profits from options trading. Now, the greater return potential associated with options is due to the leverage that options provide. Let's look at some uh, examples of this leverage. And of course, this works both ways. You can also uh, lose um, on options at a faster rate um, than just owning a stock because the, the options are so, le are so uh, leveraged that it provides leverage both on the upside and downside. So uh, while you can uh, realize a greater profit over time using options, you can also realize a greater loss. But let's just take a look at the uh, leverage that options provide. This is a option chain for Hewlett-Packard uh, stock and that was trading at the time around 32.78. So if you buy the 35 call option at the time it was selling for um, 10 cents. And um, let's assume that Hewlett-Packard Hewlett stock increased 10% in price after we bought that option and from 32.78 to 36.05. Let's just take a look at uh, the leverage that that option would provide. So the leverage that we uh, purchased for 10 cents would uh, be worth a dollar five if there was a 10% up move in the stock. So uh, that 10% up move in a stock, if you're a stock investor, um, you'd have a big investment. You'd have to invest $3,278 to buy 100 shares. And um, if it moved up 10%, you'd have a small profit. Now, if you're an option investor and you bought that 35 strike call option for $10, uh, if the stock went up 10% to $36.05, that $10 call option is worth $105. So you'd have a 950% return on your option investment. So obviously the uh, leverage that options provide um, allow you to get um, a high return in a, with a small movement in the underlying stock. And what I did is in this table is I showed uh, the, the price movement of uh, Hewlett Packard stock. So if the stock uh, trades up to 36, uh, you can see that a stock profit would be about 9.8%, um, and the uh, profit on an option would be about 900%. 900 if the stock moves up to 38, you get 15.9%. Uh, return for the stock, 
900% for the option. So you can see the um, option return uh, can be much greater than the stock return, and of course the uh, risk is also higher. Now one of the uh, advantages of option purchases is that your risk is limited to the purchase price of the option. So um, it's a it's a, a strictly a limited risk uh, uh, trade when you purchase a call option. And what that means is you can't lose more than your initial investment. And you can't get a margin call from your broker uh, asking you to add funds to your brokerage account uh, because it's a limited risk strategy. So the most you can lose is the purchase price of the option. As opposed to other investments where you can lose more than you invest initially, uh, this, this is the case with futures or Forex trading or shorting stocks. So um, I, I advise not to be in that type of a situation where uh, an adverse move suddenly overnight because of overseas events could wipe out your trading account. So I found it's much better to uh, limit your trading to limited risk trades uh, in which you only risk your initial investment. And um, you can't get a margin call if you take uh, limited risk trades. So now let's look at how we profit with options. Their options are derivatives that they derive their value from the price of the underlying stock. The intrinsic value of a call option, for example, will increase one point for each point the underlying stock increases above the strike price. So the price movement of the underlying stock is actually what determines the option's value and the resulting profit and loss. So our goal is to select stocks that are moving up in price, and we use Prime Trade Select to do that. So if we can select a stock moving up in price, purchasing a call option on that stock um, allows us to realize big profits and harness that um, the leverage that's provided by option investing. So the goal is to um, isolate stocks that are moving up in price and purchasing a call option. And if you're if you're right, that leverage can allow you to uh, realize a, a pretty good return. So we want to use Prime Trade Select to find these stocks that are moving up in price. And I showed you, <clears throat> I'm going to show you a couple examples here of options that I purchased using Prime Trade Select. And in this example, um, I purchased 15 um, Apple October 130 strike calls at 14 points, and I used Prime Trade Select to uh, select this option. So what we're going to do is look at the profit potential for this option versus just owning the stock. So you can see that the uh, how options are leveraged and and can provide a higher return. Here's another example. This is for FCX and purchased the uh, June 65 strike call at 7.20. And again, I use Prime Trade Select to select this option. And here's one more. This is for Express Scripts. Um, I bought the June 80 strike call uh, using Prime Trade Select at 10.18. Uh, and Express Scripts has since had a stock split. So this is uh, prior to the split. I bought the June 80 uh, strike call. And you can see. Express Scripts was making a series of new 52-week highs. The, it was on a buy signal. You can see the 50-day EMA above the 100-day EMA, and we had an upsloping on balance volume line. So let's look at the, the option profits I made on these three trades compared to owning the stock over the same period of time. So my brokerage confirmation shows that I sold those Apple call options, I had a $24,000 uh, profit uh, on, those, on those call options. And over the same period of time, the return for Apple stock was 13.8%. So 
I had a 116% return for the option, and over the same period of time, the stock had uh, a 13.8% return. So in this example, the option delivered uh, leverage of 8.4 times uh, greater than the stock return. So the um, option was leveraged and produced uh, 8.4 times more profit or more return than simply owning the stock. Here's a, a graph of that. We can see this is the option option return here, 116% versus the uh, stock return of 13.8%. And I sold the two FCX and the Express Scripts uh, options. I, I had a $9,000. Uh, profit on FCX and a $12,000 profit on Express Scripts. And for FCX, over the same time period, the stock produced a 14.8% return, the option produced a 126% return. So again, that was leverage that was about 8.5 times the stock return. And for Express Scripts, it was 119% return for the option versus 15.4% for the stock. And the options work just as well in down markets than they do in up markets. And we can purchase put options on stocks that are in a prime trade select uh, downtrend. And we, we look at the same indicators that we look for purchasing call options. They're just in reverse for taking bearish trades. And in the last two bear markets, um, I used this prime trade select to select bearish trades, and we did very well during the bear markets. And let's look at the real-time results over the last four years for um, options. Uh, again, there was, it was over $1.8 million in profits and uh, average return of 85% with about 91% uh, winning trades. Here's a snapshot. This is actually of my uh, Trade Monster account. And in this account, I had a $22,000 profit, average return of 198%. And I'll just kind of go through these. These are copies of my brokerage account showing this uh, $1.8 million in uh, profits. So I'll kind of just go through these quickly. Um, had an 85% average return on these options that were selected using uh, Prime Trade Select. Chuck, have you have you found yourself steering away from stocks and going gravitating more towards the option arena more and more as more liquidity pours into them? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, is it better to use options now rather than stocks? And uh, to answer that question, Tom, I use a combination of both uh, because I trade covered calls, and when I trade covered calls, of course, you're, you're buying the stock and selling an option. So I use a combination of stock purchases and um, option trades with the covered calls. And then as far as uh, directional trades, I like to mix it up, and I'll buy both uh, stocks and ETFs and I'll also purchase options on stocks and ETFs. And I like to mix it up to stay diversified. So uh, to answer your question, um, I do trade uh, options, but I also trade the underlyings. And uh, I like to mix it up just for diversification in my uh, retirement account. So I have a combination of both stock purchases and option purchases. Um, here's a, here's a uh, snapshot of my advisory service, uh, the option portfolio. Uh, we currently have $85,000 in open trade profits, average return of 123%. So that concludes the presentation for today. I want to thank everybody for joining us. And if you want to uh, take a look at my advisory service and look at the current profit results, just log on to weeklyoptionalert.com 
and click the trade results link up here and you can see the uh, current uh, trade results. So um, that concludes my presentation for today and I'd be glad to um, take, take questions that uh, uh, anybody comes up with. So. Yeah, sure, Chuck. We obviously we have tons of questions. Just just a couple quick ones for you. Um, when using the 52-week high list, you utilize the Keltner channels to basically comb through these positions to see your entry points. Do you tend to go back to favorite positions just because you feel like you know these companies better, you know, with earnings and things of that nature, or do you just tend to go blindside and just look at these? Uh, quantitative analysis, if you will, and then just attack them with entry points as you do with your uh, your options and stock. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great question, Tom. Um, what I like to do watch list of the stocks that qualify under steps one and two of Prime Trade Select, and then by looking at that watch list every day, if I see a stock retrace. I'll take a look at that stock on Keltner channels, and if, if it's retracing towards the middle or lower channel, then that usually provides a good entry point. So uh, I maintain that watch list uh, based on steps one and two of Prime Trade Select on Yahoo Finance, and then when I log on every day, I just look at my watch list portfolio, and if there's a stock or option that I don't own, um, I'll go ahead and pull the trigger when that when that stock or option uh, uh, <clears throat> stock or ETF retraces a little bit and <clears throat> starts to trade down towards that middle uh, Keltner channel and that that's worked out really well because I <clears throat> I find stocks that are in strong price uptrends uh, by the fact that they're making new 52 week highs <clears throat> and then I like to just wait a little bit so they retrace and provide a lower risk uh, entry point. So I look at that watch list every day and then look for some retracements to jump in. The um, w When it comes to purchasing of call options in regards to your system and, and your strategy here, I know everyone's different. Everyone has different pockets and different levels of, of risk. But do you typically uh, put on a certain time frame for your calls, Chuck, or how far out do you go in time typically when you when you go after something that just made that 52-week high list? Yeah, that's that's a good question. How far out do you go with the uh, options? And uh, to answer that uh, question, Tom, I like to um, stagger my uh, option um, expiration dates just to diversify my portfolio. So I'll have some um, I actually also trade weekly options, so I'll have some weekly options in there, I'll have monthly options, and I'll also <clears throat> I like to mix it up with uh, leaps options. And I found that way that if there's, there, if there's a, <clears throat> a hard sell-off and I'm diversified across different time frames like that, uh, it makes it much easier <clears throat> to survive that sell-off if I have some longer-term positions in there that I'm way ahead on, so I can just sit through the the sell off and just maintain those positions if I'm pretty far ahead. So I like to stagger the expiration dates because you never know <clears throat> when that <clears throat> rally or sell off is going to occur. So if you mix it up like that, it just kind of diversifies your portfolio, and then you can <clears throat> take advantage of rallies when they occur, and you also don't get it hit as hard with uh, sell offs. Um, and I noticed that my covered call portfolio, when we have these big sell-offs, uh, does not go down as much as the general market because the short options in that covered call portfolio, they profit as the stock is moving down in price. So if you have a big down day and <clears throat> that covered call is in the money, um, if the stock is down 2%, you may only lose... Uh, a half of a percent or even less on that covered call position because of those short options. So uh, I like to mix it up and uh, um, I noticed in particular the last several years that the uh, covered call portfolio uh, doesn't have as much volatility as a directional uh, trade portfolio because you have that short option in there. 
but to answer your question, I think it's good to stagger those expiration dates from uh, monthly and uh, maybe a three and a six month uh, call option and then also a leaps option. So I like to mix that up because you never know when that uh, downturn is going to happen. And if you have longer term options that you're way ahead on, you can just simply maintain them. Makes a lot of sense. I, I know there's a lot of questions out there for you, and this is exactly why Chuck has posted up this page. Uh, again, you can view trade results. You can take a look at the portfolio. You can contact the support staff. You can contact Brad. That's his toll-free number. Uh, he can give you assistance on that as well. Um, Chuck, it, Chuck, if you don't mind leaving that page up right there, that's that's the My Trade Monster site. And Chuck did a great two-part series webinar, which can address a lot of questions for you back in September 2011, uh, called the Stock Selection Process. And he gets into the Keltner channels and a, a little more defined area where some of the questions that we won't get to get to today. And Chuck has been kind enough to let us keep these webinars up. Thank you for that, Chuck, by the way. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I'm hoping, Chuck, you'll come back next week and share some more stuff with us. But uh, for, for those of you that do want to check out this archive, I'll have it uh, recorded and set up tomorrow right where it states April. Just click on it tomorrow on MyTradeMonster.com, and uh, we'll have Chuck's recording up there. And you can listen to it, download it, address any questions you may have to Chuck, send him an email, send the support staff an email, and I'm sure they can address all your questions. Otherwise, uh, Chuck, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. We really appreciate your time in doing this. Yes, I'm, I'm glad to do it, Tom. It's, it, it was great to be here today, and I want to thank everybody for attending and looking forward to our next webinar. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, Chuck. Have a good weekend as well. And, and for those of you that did have some bad weather and you came in and out, again, uh, on our screenshot here, MyTradeMonster.com will have this webinar archived here under April. If you'd like to contact us, by all means, we have all our contact information on my Trade Monster as well. So I hope everyone has a nice week, nice uh, end of the week, nice weekend. And again, Chuck, thank you. Thank you for all the attendees, and I hope everyone has a nice weekend. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Okay, good night, Tom. <laughs>